everyone. So I'm gonna do a video today on hand scissoring. It's a technique that lots of people struggle with in the salon and it isn't something that you learn very easily when you are training to groom and it does take quite a while to master. So I'm gonna go through some really good hand scissoring techniques today. I've got Tintin here. Tintin, say hello. He's a lovely little Bichon that I've um, groomed for years now, since about eight years ago. Um, and he's really grown into a lovely trim. So I clip the body and leave a crest, scissor the legs and scissor a nice big rounded head here. So the scissors I'm gonna show you today that I'm using are the Luminosa range. As you all know, these are my favorites. Um, I use these everyday salon use, they're really good. So I've got the big straights here. I've got the eight inch curves. I have got the Luminosa small curve scissors as well, and I've got a pair of chunkers as well. Um, so I'm gonna show you some scissoring techniques. When we are scissoring, it's really important to keep your hands steady. So, so many people, when they're learning to scissor, bounce like this. So you can see how the motion is quite bouncy, and that leaves not a very good finish on the coat, at least quite a, a choppy finish. So when you are scissoring, you want to keep your hand very still. The only thing that should be moving is your thumb. So I always practice this, and if I'm training anyone, I tell them to practice this not on a dog. So just practice it on anything. You can practice it on your hair or on the side of the table. I call them scissor exercises. So you can practice alongside the table, along any straight surface, of you just moving your thumb and not your whole hand, because that will really help with your finish on a dog. Um, also, it helps your joints. When you're using your hands, you're overextending your thumb joint and you're bending your wrists quite a lot. And it can cause carpal tunnel and kind of repetitive strain injury at quite a young age. I wish I learned how to hand scissor earlier than what I did because I could have saved myself a lot of joint pain. <laughs> but I've learned now, woohoo! Um, so by doing this, you're also saving yourself long term so you can groom for longer, which is amazing. So I'll just go through that again. So steady hand here and then just your thumb should be moving. And you can rotate your hand either way. So we're going up, down, side, and up, okay? And you're just moving this thumb, and that gives you a nicer finish. So when we are hand scissoring, we want to use a good scissor mist. This really helps to keep the coat not static, and kind of lift it, and leave a nice finish. I'm using the Nature's Speciality Scissor stuff today, but I also really like the Wonder Coat as well. Um, the Groom Professional range. So I always use a scissor spray when I am scissoring and your best friend, your comb. Don't forget your comb. Um, I see so many people brush down and then scissor and actually you really need to get in there and fluff up. So that lifts the coat from the root, as you can see. So I'm lifting it up, okay? When you are scissoring, you need to go with the contour of the body as well, especially on the body. So you are following it up. Obviously this depends on what trim you're doing. If you're not doing a bees on trim, you don't want to do this. This is where finding out your trims, going to shows and finding what different things work. But the most common one is the tubular leg. So you want to make sure you're going down each side and there's not too much overhanging outside. And by doing this, you can actually stand from the front. Make sure you move around your dog because if you just stand from the side, you only get this perspective of the dog. You need to move around so you can see, and you should see that nothing should be overhanging here and you're going straight down the side of the dog here. And you can see how I'm keeping my scissors flush. I'm not actually scissoring his leg because I've done his leg already. Um, but you can see how that creates that nice finish, okay? So I'm just gonna show you on his crest here. So I'm using my straights here, and it's really good to have a nice wide blade when you're scissoring because that leaves a really nice finish. And you can see how I'm not bouncing my hand I am just going up and moving my thumb to create that nice plush finish that we have. And you don't need to scissor this fast. When you first learn, you probably will be a bit slower like this, but that comes with experience and you will eventually learn to, to move your scissors quicker and not be so afraid of everything you're taking off. It is quite daunting hand scissoring for the first time because you always think you're gonna take too much hair off. Um, but just go slowly. You can always take more hair off but you can't add hair back on. So never go too crazy and uh, scissor happy because you can't add hair on. Hand scissoring is a technique that is quite, um, a lot of people, a lot more people want it now, um, but it is quite hard to learn, but it is a really good speciality for your salon. So it's really good um, if you can offer that as a service, it's something that other people don't necessarily offer. So that's really good. So I'm just gonna come up the crest here. 
around here. My colleagues come to distract me. She's still in my equipment and I can see her. <laughs> it's the advantage of working. Hand scissoring is really hard working in a busy salon because as soon as someone walks in, you get distracted. <laughs> and she's just stumbled, my favorite comb as well. <laughs> So you can see here that it's left a nice finish up here and you can create a nice shape with the body. Now I find scissors leave a much nicer finish here than clippers. You can tell the difference between a clip dog and a scissors dog, a scissor dog um, really easily as well. So one of our most popular trims is where we clip the body and we scissor the legs. That is our, we, we call it a puppy cut, some people call it a teddy cut, there's different names for it. Same style, so shorter on the body, hands, scissors, legs. Most popular trim, everyone loves it. So if you can offer that in your salon, it's a really good one to offer. Um, and just go slowly when you're learning and just try and keep your hands steady so that you're not bouncing your scissors too much because that is the, is the main thing that leaves a choppy finish. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is scissor care. Good boy, these are And the next thing I'm gonna talk about is scissor care as well. Um, I cannot tell you the amount of times I've gone to visit people and I've seen rusty scissors in their drawer where they've just been left and, and chucked, uh, chucked in the drawer on top of each other, uh, kind of like this in the drawer, which creates damage to the blades. Um, regular sharpening is definitely, it's okay darling, it's okay. Regular sharpening is one of the most important things and also oiling your scissors. I tend to oil my scissors at least once a week and I spray them down after every dog with the four in one spray. Um, and it really does help to keep them not only clean and sterile, but also very sharp. When I am hand scissoring, I find that the curved scissors are really good for going around the parts of the body that you can't necessarily use straights on. Sometimes straight leaves too sharp of a finish. So especially with Bichon's heads, Bichon's are meant to be quite curved and very rounded. These are fantastic for going over the head because they actually, you can see by the blade, they go with the shape of the body and it just creates a lot less work for you having to re-go over everything. If you're already using curves, it really does help just go round that head. So you can see now I'm just going round his head to create a nice, nice Bichon rounded head there. And that's a really nice, really nice pair of scissors, these Luminosa, to do that with. You can get a really nice finish on it as well. So that is my hand scissoring techniques for today. Please do feel free to message me if you'd like to know anything else about hand scissoring. I'm gonna finish this little Bichon's head now because he's getting a bit fidgety and he knows his mum is out the front waiting for him. But thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.